the Hoko Politzos Poetry Moment featuring Requiem by Anna Akmaktova. I'm Sean Sebastian Noth. Akmaktova was a Russian poet and translator who barely survived the atrocities of her country. She lived through the Great Purge and the Stalinist terror, more than 15 years of her books being banned and suppressed, grinding poverty, harassments, and threats from the state police. She conceived of her poem, Requiem, while standing in line with hundreds of other women outside Leningrad's prison. Akmaktova and the other women were waiting with baskets of food they hoped to smuggle into the prison for their family members. One day while standing in the cold in line, another woman heard that Akmaktova was a poet and asked her to get out the news about their vigil. Akmaktova began writing. Subject to constant danger of search and arrest, Akmaktova composed requiem on scraps of paper, told her long narrative poem line by line to her closest friends to memorize, then burned the bits of paper in an ashtray. She was afraid for good reason. A repression order by the Soviet government was signed in 1937, condemning those speaking against the government. The order instructed insurrectionists in category one to be executed by shooting, while those placed in category two were sent to gulag, forced labor camps. Akmaktova's anguishing family story is told in her poem. Akmaktova's son was dragged from home in the middle of the night by state police because his mother and father, both subversive poets, spoke against the government. His father died in prison. Akmaktova waited outside the Leningrad prison for the 17 months her son was in prison there and then fretted at home when he was sent to a forced labor camp. For decades, she wrote in secret and hoped to see again her son who after 20 years was eventually released. Akmaktova chose not to immigrate. Instead, staying in the Soviet Union to act as a witness to the horrors around her. Because of its criticism of the purges, her poem, Requiem, was not published in the USSR until 1987. Soon after it was published in America, poet Carolyn Forche read Akmaktova's poem. Known for her own poems about Civil War atrocities in El Salvador, Forche spent 13 years collecting work from the world's poets like Akmaktova, writers who had endured imprisonment, exile, repression, censorship, war. In her book, Against Forgetting, 20th Century Poetry of Witness, Forche amassed poems from more than 140 writers from five continents, spanning history from the Armenian genocide to the massacre in Tiananmen Square. She coined the term poetry of witness, naming the method writers use to describe history under extreme conditions. Forche explained, I was interested in what these experiences had done to the poet's imaginations and to their language, and whether or not, regardless of the subject matter, whether one could feel this suffering and extremity in the poems. The lines Forche reads in this poetry moment are only a small excerpt of Akmaktova's longer work. The Antioch Review wrote that the poems Forche collected provide irrefutable and copious evidence of the human ability to record, to write, to speak in the face of those atrocities. Forche said her anthology takes its impulse from the words of Roberto Breck poem. He wrote, in the dark times, will there be singing? Yes, there will be singing about the dark times, especially in dark times, poets must sing. And now, Requiem by Anna Akmaktova. Requiem, no foreign sky protected me no stranger's wing shielded my face. I stand as witness to the common lot, survivor of that time, that place. 
instead of a preface. In the terrible years of the Yeshov terror, I spent 17 months waiting in line outside the prison in Leningrad. One day, somebody in the crowd identified me. Standing behind me was a woman with lips blue from the cold who had, of course, never heard me called by name before. Now, she started out of the torpor common to us all and asked me in a whisper, everyone whispered there, can you describe this? And I said, I can. Then something like a smile passed fleetingly over what had once been her face.